Hey there, uh, so I'm sitting in my section today talking about Hegel, and I just I had to make this video. It just, it came to me. It had to be done. I, it, it all just was a vision, right? So here I am making a video on philosophy of science. <clears throat> and what I want to do in this video is lay out the three major schools of thought when it comes to the debate between anti-realism and scientific realism. Scientific anti-realism, that is. Uh, now, I have sort of created these categories. Other philosophers have used these terms, but I'm using these three categories as uh, large umbrellas to sort of cover a bunch of other smaller categories that will uh, that would all sort of fall within one of these three circles that you see in front of you. Um, so, so keep in mind, this again, this is a very, very shallow, very introductory look at these three schools, and there's a lot of uh, different ideas expressed between them, and even some overlap, right? You might you might see people fall in between these different schools. So let's, uh, with that said, let's get started. I'm going to start with the scientific uh, anti-realist of the revisionary sort. Now, the revisionary scientific anti-realist thinks that, that science isn't really, it's not truth-telling, for one, but it, it's worse than not truth-telling. It's, it's giving us a fictional story. It's, it's being formulated by the biases and the intentions of the scientists and the sort of sociological uh, structure that they, they, they find themselves within. Uh, the pursuit of science is knowledge creation, right? It's fiction. It doesn't give us actual knowledge about the world. It just gives us this sort of subjective insight. And, and the ultimate goal for, these, for this group is that science either ought to be revised, it needs to be it needs to be built from the ground up or abandoned because they, they feel there really is no scientific method. That science is just sort of, you know, they're just making shit up, basically. <clears throat> um, and this this school of thought is largely found, I believe, on post-structuralists, post-modernists, and other schools of continental philosophy. It, it is a point of view that is held by, by quite a few philosophers currently. Um... It's also a viewpoint that I, I'm going to be honest with you, I, I haven't studied in depth. So if there's anybody who really identifies with the revisionary scientific anti-realism position, and they want to make videos about that and have a conversation, I think that would be absolutely fantastic. I think that would make, I think it'd be very interesting. Um, but let, let's let's look at what their detractors say. Let's move over to scientific realism, right? Um, one of the things I think here is that the revisionary scientific anti-realist doesn't have a very good position. They don't have a rationally defensible position. It seems hard to be consistent with that. The reason why is that, you know, shit works, right? I can turn on my computer, and I can go on the internet, and I can upload this video. I can use my GPS to uh, find an in-out burger when I'm in Los Angeles. I can do all sorts of things with, with all these things that are built and constructed by science. Um, I can use scientific theories to predict you know, the motion of the moons of Jupiter. Uh, simply put, science works, right? My TV works. All these things work. And science has an extremely high success rate of working and giving us things that work. And, and you know, coming through on the predictions that it makes. This, this is called the miracle argument or the ultimate argument for uh, scientific realism, right? If, if all these theories and these entities posited by science are not real and they're not true and they're not what they claim to be, why does this shit work? So, moving into scientific realism, um, th wh what they think is uh, science at the very least, right, at the very least gives us knowledge about the true structures of the world and the universe. Science is more than just a tool to save the phenomena. And let me explain this term, save the phenomena. This is an old term that kind of goes, goes back to, I believe, the Middle Ages. And it's, it means that, like, you know, you see something, you're observing some sort of weird thing, right? Maybe somebody's getting sick, and so you come up with an idea for why this person's getting sick. And you can explain it, and you can make some sort of predictions about it. But to simply save the phenomena is not to actually tell the truth about it. I mean, I, I could come up with some totally wrong reason why somebody gets a cold and make some sort of predictions that might be true, but it's, you know, maybe I'm saying that they're being possessed by demons, and whenever they go out in the cold, they'll the demons will get more at them because the demons like the cold or something like that. You know, I can make up this totally ad hoc bullshit theory, but it, it may have some limited predictive power, so I've saved the phenomena to some extent. Um, so the scientific realist rejects that science is simply saving the phenomena, but they think that it's, it's granting real insight into the truth of the universe. Um, 
And one of the key features here is that the ontological status of unobservables is granted, right? This is probably the defining feature between non-revisionary scientific anti-realism and scientific realism, right? The ontological status of unobservables. Now, what is an unobservable? Well, that's like an electron, a subatomic particle. It's anything that you can't see with your native biological features, right? You can't see an electron with your eyes. Electron microscopes do not see electrons. They see the stuff that electrons do, right? Think of it like a fish in the water, and all you see is the water rippling. You guess that there's a fish there, but you don't actually see the fish. <clears throat> so, and, and that, that kind of dovetails nicely into the non-revisionary scientific anti-realism position. Now, uh, this position you would find, you know, positivists, uh, instrumentalists, and uh, constructive empiricists. And I'm going to focus more on constructive empiricists because positivism is dead and instrumentalism is downplayed to some extent at this point in time. And I'm more interested in what's going on now, what's, what the debate is today. Uh, so the position of the, the non-revisionary scientific anti-realist is that science is a rational pursuit, um, but the aim of science, right, what science is able to achieve, the, its predictive power about the world, is restricted from telling us a literally true story about the world, but instead it gives us useful tools to help understand the phenomena, right? For them, science is saving the phenomena. That, that term I just explained. Um, and, and the ontological status of unobservables is, is withheld. It's, they're either skeptical about it or they deny it outright. Um, <clears throat> and and the, the core sort of contention here is sort of this old empiricist intention, right? This kind of comes from David Hume, that inferential knowledge claims are not truth-telling. And if you're wondering what I mean by inferential knowledge claims, uh, you can think of, think of this old example of, you know, I, I tell you that the sun is going to rise tomorrow, and you say, Aaron, how do you know that the sun is going to rise tomorrow? And I say, well... Uh, you know, I, every morning of my life, I've got up and I've watched the sunrise, and it's always it's always risen. So, because it's always risen, it should rise tomorrow. Therefore, it's going to rise tomorrow, right? But the problem here is that you know, something could happen. The sun could supernova, or a black hole could swallow it. I mean, maybe not, but something could happen that the sun wouldn't rise tomorrow. It's it's not a logical fact of the matter that the sun has to rise tomorrow. I, I'm inferring. I'm making a a guess, basically, right? And this is this is this is what the non-revisionary scientific anti-realist wants to say that science is doing. Science is making very very good guesses about what's going on below the surface, especially when regarded to these unobservables and these laws of nature and things like that. But the guesses aren't. We have no reason to think that the guesses are actually true. Um, we go back to this this ultimate argument, this uh, miracle argument that I gave a little while back. The, the, the scientific, um, the non-revisionary scientific anti-realist or the constructive empiricist would say, look, um, yes, science works very well. Um, I enjoy my iPhone or my Android. I love my laptop. I like to drive my car. I, you know, I like to go watch space shuttles go into space. I use my GPS satellites, blah, 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 blah. But science isn't telling us the truth about the world. It's just, um, this is just proof that our theories are empirically adequate. Okay, this is a term I've used before, and this is an important term to uh, to latch onto and to understand here. Empirically adequate. What does it mean for something to be empirically adequate? For something to be empirically adequate, it means that it has excellent predictive power over the phenomena that we observe, right? The things that we see, and we're predicting what, what's going on there, what's the theory behind it, it has perfect predictive power, both past, present, and future. Um, it should also have some level of fertility so that it can it can branch out and be, you know, it can co cohere with other theories. So empirically adequate doesn't mean true. It's just below true. Um, but the, the non-revisionary scientific anti-realist, specifically the constructive empiricist, will say the reason that, that the miracle of science is explained by empirical adequacy, not truth. Um, all right. I, I think... I think I've got it all out there. So, again, if anybody, I, I'd love to hear what anybody has to think about this. If this is interesting, what do you think about this? What position might you latch onto? Um, if anybody has wants to defend specifically revisionary scientific anti-realism, if I have any post-structuralist viewers, I would love, love, love to hear about that. Um, I, I think that's fascinating. 
And I, I think that's all I've got for you today. So thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this. Good night.